Welcome to CounterPoint, Columbia and CAT TV's very own Civics Forum. My name is Carl Scala, and I serve as Columbia's third ward city councilman, as well as your host for CounterPoint. I have two guests this evening. Uh, on my far right is Mark Farnan. He's a partner in Strategist LLC, a marketing, public relations, and public affairs firm based in Columbia. He's the past president of the Hawthorne Foundation, specializing in economic development initiatives for the state of Missouri. He is the current president of the Enterprise Development Corporation, is a frequent guest host and analyst on KFRU's morning meeting. Next to me is Mike Martin, is a science journalist and member of the National Press Club. He has an international client base that includes Science Magazine, the Journal of National Cancer Institute, and McLean's. He writes a citizen journalist column for the Columbia Business Times and maintains a well-known alternative news blog called Columbia Heartbeat. Well, when we last left this conversation, we re we, last time we were joined by, with Cat Hughes, uh, and we were talking about a number of uh, issues that were left over, I guess, from the City Council retreat. Uh, meanwhile, there's some other things heating up around City Council and so on. Uh, one of those things has to do with uh, the recent announcement that there, there has been a long-standing uh, long work done by the Planning and Zoning Commission on the overlay district for the North Central uh, 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 Neighborhood Association. And I guess they've been working on that for now close to six months or so. Um, I think at last count, they, they kind of punted. They, uh, they tied. They had, I think it was a 4-4 tie at their last meeting. But before that happened, there's been a little bit of excitement around City Hall because the business community has decided uh, that they wanted to uh, um, apply for a business district position, although they said that their original intention was to apply also for a full-blown neighborhood association. And I won't get into too many of the details. They're essentially the same. There are a few, uh, there are a few advantages of having a neighborhood association over a business district uh, designation. But generally speaking, they're, they're, they're pretty much the same. The problem that the city council found that they had was something that I wasn't aware of at the time. And that is, uh, in the past, there has been a case where one neighborhood association overlaps another neighborhood association. Um, I can see huge problems with that, and we talked a little bit about that at the, last, uh, at the last meeting. But this issue is kind of like that. It seems like these days, given the fact that neighborhood associations are, are being empowered and, and seem to, to have a little bit of a, 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 a well, they have an, a little bit of an advantage that they didn't have in the past, um, there are more neighborhood associations being established, and there are groups within those neighborhood associations that don't agree with each other. So they're either forming separate groups or trying to form separate groups. Um, I think uh, some of the commentary that we had at the last city council meeting had, uh, uh, went to the issue of whether or not overlapping districts are reasonable for representation of folks and whether or not this designation for a business district ought to, ought to go to the, to the business community who is interested in preserving their interests within that neighborhood association. What do you think about that? Where do you think, do you think this is, this is an internecine warfare? Or do you, what, what is actually going on here? There's another example of this as well in the West Broadway Neighborhood Association where another one was formed right next to it because they had a difference of opinion. Where do you see this going? Well, I, I recall the, the West Broadway situation, and, and it was uh, a little different, I guess, than what's happened in North Central because it was, I'll call it unincorporated ter territory. In this one, it's defined, or it's been defined that uh, the North Central Neighborhood Association already represents this group, and that uh, they are a part of that neighborhood association already, and that there's no real way, I, I assume, or nothing that I have seen that allows you to secede from the union. <laughs> um, but that being said, what I think is happening here is there is a group of people who have identified themselves clearly as having a particular set of interests, which is one of the things that is mandated to become an, a neighborhood association. I looked on the website today, on the city's website, and it says you need to form a statement why you want to be represented and what are your interests. And the interests that they have articulated so far seem to be at least, if not different in uh, a total scope, different in intent. And I think there is some level of distrust of what may be put upon them by people that disagree with mm -hmm. them. 
and both sides refer to each other as us and them. Mm -hmm. if, if that is the existing situation, I see no reason that they should not be able to form a district that would be a neighborhood association or, or something that's comparable that would give them parity. Uh, right now, there seems to be a real reluctance to give these people parity of voice. They'll say, oh, well, we might make you a, a business district, but we're not going to give you the same full powers as a neighborhood association. I think that they should be given parity. I think they should be allowed to form. And I, I could see, I could see that there, are, uh, there is no set um, uh, size that must be attained by a neighborhood association. I was looking at the map just earlier, and there are about 50 different groups that are have been formed within the city limits. <coughs> And they range from little, teeny, tiny districts to fairly large ones. This one is somewhere in the middle. There's, there's nothing that says that it has to be um, all uh, uh, single-family residences, that it has to be all duplexes, that it has to be all apartment buildings, or that it has to be all business. And there's nothing that says that it can't. So I think that they have a fair argument, and I think it. I think it. I, I think that it will be a good debate. Um, and I would, I would probably come down on the side of recognition of this new group as a neighborhood association, regardless of the group that they are identified with currently.